I see uh, in the Hispanic community, the, the black community and the white community, the three of them, they still have some differences. And they have to, you know, just come to a point of agreement. But, yeah, it's still there. It's not from white to black or black to Mexican. It's, it's just, it's anything different. People are afraid of it. Exactly. And if they're afraid of it, they just they segregate themselves a little. People not wanting to sit next to each other. People not wanting to stand next to each other. As far as racism, I think we're regressing instead of progressing. She like you have police profiling still. You still have, in a lot of the workplace too, still, still have like hiring practices, promotion practices, and stuff like that. I guess maybe when I was interviewing for residency programs. And different, you know, they would look at me a little differently uh, when I walked in the room. You know, they they would expect some some other type of person. I still encounter it pretty much on a daily basis in terms of walking in the stores or you know just different things like that. It's fear. Hatred comes from fear, and fear comes from the unknown. And if you assume that another culture is so entirely different from you, then you might assume that they don't like you. And then that's when the fear comes, and then that's when you start giving it back. And then that's when they're feeling it coming from you, so they start giving it back to you. So people just got to kick back. They just, really, they just got to kick back. It's tough for us to get along with each other in a healthy, proactive way. It is easier for us to isolate ourselves from each other and to ignore different people groups. But as Christians, that's not an alternative. We have to love and care for our neighbors. It is a hallmark of who we are. I'm just like you. I bleed just like you do, so we got to get along. Getting along. It sounds so simple, yet it's been so difficult for us to achieve as a human race. It's one of the real challenges facing us in life as human beings, isn't it? Hello, I'm Neil Earl. Visiting the Simon Wiesenthal Center at the Museum of Tolerance here in Los Angeles. This is a good place to learn about getting along. Have you ever felt that our generation has inherited the ancient Chinese blessing, may you live in interesting times? Why, there's the internet, satellite technology, jet travel, instant communications. Never have so many forces been pulling our world together, together. Yet, as any visitor to the Museum of Tolerance quickly learns, the ancient enemies of humanity are alive and just there, just there below the surface, waiting to swing into action. Here we see vividly depicted the fear, hatred, division, persecution, tension, and tension, and bloodshed that scour world. Indeed, never has it been more urgent to learn about the principles of reconciliation in our fast-changing world. That's why I invite you to join us on a unique and unusual journey. The Bible tells Christians that they've been given a special assignment that we've been called to a ministry of reconciliation. This is exactly what we will discover in our time together. We'll see Christians from many different denominations and beyond working together in this great move of God, joining Jesus Christ in his ministry of reconciliation. The Bible's teaching to be reconciled, to be truly one in Christ, is so clear and so encouraging. And yet, as even Christian historians report, it is often the church that's been the greatest barrier to our unity in Christ. It's a well-known fact, for example, that American slavery could never have lasted as long as it did without the aid and support of the mainstream churches 135 years ago. But times change. A new movement of the Holy Spirit is spreading across the body of Christ. A fresh breeze is blowing. In our church, the Worldwide Church of God, we see it as a move of God. God. Christ has done amazing things in our fellowship. And to him be the glory. To him be the glory. He brought all this about. This is not of man. This is a God thing. I'd like to read to you from Barclay. He quotes Father Taylor of Boston as saying, there's just enough room in the world for all people in it, but there is no room for the fences which separate them. There's no room for fences. In the book, The Cross of Peace by Sir Philip Gibbs, it says this. In these days of dividing walls of race and class and creed, 
we must shake the earth anew with the message of the great all-inclusive Christ in whom there is neither bond nor free, Jew nor Greek, Scythian nor barbarian, but all are one. We need to shake the earth anew with that message of oneness in Christ. No walls. We're in the process right now of tearing down walls that we built. Though not everyone noticed, the last decade of the 20th century was called by some the Reconciliation Decade. Millions around the world were inspired by Paul II's visit to the State of Israel. This visit rounded out a decade where the Pope confessed the Church's guilt in the African slave trade and Catholic exploitation of the natives of Latin America. In America. Reconciliation. In the United States, the Southern Baptist Convention formally apologized to African Americans for the sin of slavery. And the new century is beginning on an optimistic note. More and more Christians are seeing the need to stress reconciliation as part of their mandate. My church, the Worldwide Church of God, has been a multiracial church almost from its very beginnings. Very beginnings. Some of our congregations have included as many as 60 nationalities in their fold. For decades, we've been a truly worldwide body, present in more than 110 nations and territories around the world. Yet like too many Christian groups, we nursed our own peculiar kinds of race prejudice. For years, we taught a form of British Israelism, the rather unusual idea that the Anglo-Saxon people are somehow God's specially chosen people. This teaching had a profound effect on the way people were allowed to date, dance, and even marry inside our fellowship. There were many times when opportunities of service, job promotions, and even ordination into the ministry were determined on the basis of race. Yes, we had our own form of glass ceiling. This teaching opened up a form of discrimination of which we are not proud. But a merciful God is moving among us. He's begun to allow us to correct these problems. The Worldwide Church of God apologizes to all men and women of any color or creed who have been hurt, and many have, by that teaching. We are deeply sorry. In the 1990s, those racially charged ideas began to change rapidly, rapidly. In 1996, we began teaming up with other community agencies and conducting racial healing seminars in the United States. In 1999, we began our own Office of Reconciliation Ministries, or ORM. ORM. The Office of Reconciliation Ministries tried to provide a safe house where hurts and wounds can be identified, exposed, and treated. This bold and dramatic move from race to grace has not been painless. At our healing weekends, the accent has been on honesty and frankness in the spirit of speaking the truth in love. 